Courtney Cronin joins us now with much more. What's going on at the Bears facility specifically today's rookies report? Kevin, the Chicago Bears have put ink to paper with their top two draft picks. Caleb Williams and Rome Adunze have signed their rookie contracts. This was the day that rookies reported to Hallis Hall for training camp. Practice begins on Saturday. Williams signing a four-year fully guaranteed deal worth $39.4 million. Roma Adunze, $22.7 million fully guaranteed. Both of those contracts mm contain the fifth year option as well for first round picks. And I had checked in on this earlier today. I was told by a team source that things were progressing. I know that this came up to the 11th hour, but inside Hallis Hall, sources I spoke with were not concerned that these deals would not end up getting done. Roma Dunze has an NFLPA certified agent. Caleb Williams does not. So there was this question about why things might have been taking a little bit longer to get up until this point. And one source told me that one thing you have to consider is that a lot of players already have made a lot of money in college football via name, image, and likeness. They're not necessarily chomping at the bit to get that signing bonus right away because of the resources they already have acquired throughout their college football career. So there really wasn't any sort of rush to get this done. But going into training camp on Saturday, the Bears have everybody under contract, and they hope that this pairing, Roma Dunze and Caleb Williams, will yield the same sort of output that we haven't seen since Andy Dalton and A.J. Green back with the Cincinnati Bengals, a rookie quarterback and rookie wide receiver combination to amass 1,000 yards in year one. Courtney, good stuff there. Williams has already been named the week one starter. Uh, keep in mind, no Bears quarterback has ever thrown for 4,000 yards in a season. No one. I can think about that in the history of the entire franchise. Courtney, thank you. Dan, let's bring you in here and, as well as Field and Lewis. All right, the, the addition of Keenan Allen. Yeah. You got Roma Dunze. Don't forget, you got DJ Moore. What do you mm. want to see specifically in year one with Caleb Williams under center? How quickly he adjusts to the importance of staying on schedule. Yeah. In college, it doesn't matter. In playing college football, you're trying to run as many plays as you can and score as many points as you can. If you get into second and 10 or third and 10, it really doesn't matter because you're going to get the ball back in a minute. In the NFL, that's not real life. And when I say staying on schedule, because we hear that all the time in football, right? The, the way kind of to get people to understand it is when the coach calls the first down play, he's thinking and hoping, worst case scenario, I'm in second and six. Because mm. in second and six, I don't have to fear if I don't get any yards because I can survive third and five, third and six. So as a quarterback, you have to get comfortable and respectful of, okay, if it's not there or something downfield isn't an option, I got to make sure that I will keep us on schedule because once an offensive coordinator gets into second and ten, they're in defensive mode. Mm. And then it's like, oh, okay, because I don't want to get in a third and eight, so I just want to get four yards here. And then you're always playing from behind, essentially. How quickly Caleb gets comfortable with that, yet still able to – I'm not talking, you know, um, cautious with the ball. Mm -hmm. Still trying to be explosive, but comfortable keeping that offense on schedule so his play caller can stay in that rhythm. Because in the NFL, if you stay off schedule – you die at that position. In college, it's not like that. How quickly Caleb adjusts to that, I think, determines really how well he achieves at the top level his rookie year. Lewis? Yeah, the relationship, I think, is – the relationship between him and Shane Waldron is really what we're, what we're getting at here. Look, I think – from a personnel standpoint, if we just put all these guys up on a sheet of paper, meaning the offensive depth chart for Chicago, which many people have done, you sit there and go, that's it, that's easy. That's an easy situation where a quarterback should be able to come in here and absolutely just start ripping it up. Because just look at the weapons, look at the offensive line, look at the running backs and all. But look, I, I, I've been banging this drum all off season and I can't bang it enough. How vertically integrated this coaching staff is from head coach to offensive coordinator to quarterback coach, and then on down to Caleb, and how it all flows down through him, and then he's able to disseminate it as the quarterback on the football field, is A number one for me. That, that's all I care about right now as far as him being able to maximize his potential on this football team, being able to have a quarterback, Kevin, as you said, that can throw for over 4,000 yards, potentially this year or sometime in the near future. Because that's what it's going to be about. It's going to be about whether or not – Shane can put him in those situations, teach him this offense, give him the answers to where he can then go out and get the ball to all these fantastic playmakers. Because if that breaks down, it doesn't matter. I've been on those dream team type of teams where it looked great on paper and it doesn't sure. work. 
I'm hoping that's not the case here. And you know about a dream team, Kev. I do. You we don't know need, about yeah, we don't need bring to bring up, up 2011. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, will piggyback, I will piggyback on what both Dan, Dan and Lewis have said. Maybe just uh, put it in slightly different words. When Dan was talking about playing on schedule, sometimes for Caleb, he had a tendency during college, which he could often get Chase. away with. Yeah, hey, just – don't always go for the home run, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes just take the easy play. Live to see another down, as Dan was just talking about. You know, second and six is a win for most offensive play callers when they are dialing plays up at the beginning sequence of the offensive drive. And I think for Caleb, part of it last year was the personnel. It was a much totally. different cast of people around him, both in terms of the offensive line and also the weapons that were surrounding him. A year prior to that, he had Jordan Addison, who was a first-round pick for the Vikings, had a breakout brilliant season for USC during his one year in Southern California. I just think for Caleb early in a career. And I think this is coachable. I would argue it's coachable. It's hard. He's been playing football for 22 years, man, or you know, 15 and a years. Style about yeah, it. A certain yeah. style. It's going to be muscle memory he's got to develop over the next month and a half to remember it's okay to find the easy way out sometimes. Yeah, and, and the hard part is, and I've been in these situations before, when you have a defensive-minded head coach, mm. they're always like, Let's play good defense. Yeah. Let's not give the ball away. Every that, drive yeah, ends yeah, on yeah, a, yeah. a kick, yeah, right? Yeah. And, then, and then all of a sudden you take this very unique talent and you take his stinger away and he becomes way too cautious. Yeah. That's not what we're saying. Yeah. It's, that, it's that fine line, that balancing act of when to and when not to. And I think like September, candidly, September's got to be a b- little bit of him feeling that out and learning on the fly in the NFL. It helps to have Keenan Allen in the huddle. Shoot. Calm down. Let's yeah. get let's get like the, the quick passes. Let's move the offense and the chains down the road. He's not nearly the athlete as Lamar is. I'm not trying to make this about yeah. athletic ability and running. But Lamar has mastered the skill. Of, like He can run the ball in every play if he wanted to, right? He's yeah. the best athlete on the field. Right. He's mastered when I need to use my legs versus when sure. I am a precision passer. I can do that as well. It's part of the reason why he's won two MVPs already.